morning everybody, welcome to the River Welland in South Lincolnshire. My name is Jake Reeds, I work in the fisheries function for the Environment Agency and today we're going to be doing some fisheries monitoring work. Now um, uh, it's quite a big section of water just here, um, the fish in the lower well end have got about 40 kilometres of river they can move into, they can go downstream to Spalding and then go upstream almost all the way to Peterborough in the right conditions and there's a couple of little channels they can go up as well. Um, so they're quite hard to find. Now it's the middle of winter this morning and the, the reason why we're down here now um, doing this, and I'll try and explain why. So to, traditionally, we've tried to monitor the fish, fish in the river here in summertime. So as water temperatures come up, the fish population expands out along the river, it spreads out, they feed in different places, and we've used netting and what's called split beam hydroacoustics to get an idea of where they are. But the weed as well, we get quite excessive weed growth on the lower well end. It's always hampered our netting operations and it's always kind of played tricks with the acoustic results we get. So what we've tried to do is we try to use the conditions to our favour. So we wait till the middle of winter, it's probably around minus two now, overnight it's probably minus five, minus six. The water temperature is really cold, the weeds died back and the fish will be shoaled up. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use two different methods to try and find the fish, two different types of sonar monitoring. I'll explain them in a minute. But the reason we're here is very specific. So this morning, we want to try and find where the adult bream in the lower well end over winter. We want to try and find out how many fish there are in that shoal. And then we're going to try and measure a subsample of them to get an idea of the length, frequency, of how big they are. I'm going to try and do all that without touching a single fish. And with a bit of luck, they won't even know we're here. So um, uh, that's the plan. Um, we'll load the boat up and I'll show you the equipment. And we'll go from there. Okay, so this is the first bit of equipment I'll show you. This is our side scan sonar. So that's the transducer there. That sits in the water. The sound waves ping out either side of this bit of equipment there. And that gives us a bird's eye view of the river. And we get the results back on this screen here. And what that will enable us to do is see the river from side to side as we go along um, from, from, the, from the top. And then we'll have to find fish shoulder up really easily because they show us targets. So we'll use that to try and find the shoal. And then once we get in the shoal, we'll swap over to this. So this is a multi-beam sonar. It's on a pan and tilt unit, which allows us to look left and right, up and down, and it also allows us to roll as well, so we can see fish in 3D. And this produces high defini defini definition images, and we'll be able to record a section of the fish as they swim past, and we'll be able to measure them and ID them using that. So together, it's quite a good combination. We've used it a lot in our, in our patch over the past few years on the Fens range. We've got some really good results from the bream, lower neen, um, the Witham. So yeah, they're out there and this helps us find them. Okay, so we're now up and surveying. So on the front mount there, we've got the multi-beam in the middle and just off that pole, we've got the side scan. So what the side scan does, it gives us a bird's eye view bank to bank of the river. So you can see the right hand bank just there, left hand bank just there, and you can see the bed as we go along. And what this allows us to do, when there's no weed, like you can see there, when we see fish, they show up as really, really bright marks, and you can see the shadow on the bed behind them. So this allows us to go along quite fast and find large shoals of fish when it's cold. So when we do find them, we'll drift through very slowly. This is the multi-beam, and this gives us really high definition images. So we can, this has got a little um, joystick there, we can make it go left and right and we can roll it on its side as well and see fish in 3D. That's connected to the GPS so all the footage is logged and we know where we are. A bit about the boat, um, we use this boat for a good reason really. It's, it's quite, we can go quite fast in it. Um, if you need to cover large distances you can do and it's ever so easy to launch so we can launch it pretty much anywhere where we need to. Um, it's quite quiet as well so at the moment you'll see we're using an electric outboard and we're doing that because what we found is is the fish will react to petrol outboards and they will move away from us. So we've got a few different outboards we use. We've got petrol outboards and we've got smaller electrics that are basically silent, but we're using that one today because it's fairly quiet. You can probably hear it going around, but what it does do, it allows us to move quite quickly. And so that'll allow us to get close to the fish without spooking them too much. And then we can go in with multi-beam and measure them and ID them. We've just gone through quite a big shoal you can see them there, they've been spaced out about half a mile in quite good numbers like that really. So there's quite a few fish in here. So we're going to keep going until they stop and then we'll come back on the multi-boom in a minute. You can see them, they keep popping up. You can see the shadows they cast on the bed. And we'll try and find a couple on here now, just to show you quick. But in a minute we'll go past and see what we can find. Okay, right, we're in amongst the broom now. And you can just see one facing us there. A couple of fish there. 
they're having to move around in the flow so they're quite active so what we'll try and do is, is drift through the shoal and then take some measurements as we go I might need two hands for this bit okay well, we're just able to record quite a few fish drifting quietly past the front of the boat so we should be able to get a sub sample from them and we've got some footage in 3d as well now yeah we're quite happy with that um i think because the debility of all the rain we've had they spread out over a bit of a longer distance the water temperature's right down it's three degrees so i'm hoping they're gonna be shoulder a bit more but i think that turbidity has just enabled them to spread out a bit more and the food with a bit more confidence but what we'll do is take, take data back home Post it all and um, uh, we'll look at the numbers. But we're expecting from that, I'd say it's going to hopefully in the thousands of fish, definitely. Um, one thing we have noticed is, is that there's very few small fish out in the main river this time of year when the water temperatures are low. All the roach are going to go to key locations and we're going to talk a bit about that in some videos later on. Okay, so we've now got the data back in the office and we're going to process it to see what we've got. Um, so what this is, it's an overview of the side scan data we've collected. Um, it's quite a big set of data this is, uh, hence there's four different sections we're looking at. And effectively the boat travels in this kind of direction, it goes upstream like that, and there's the next section down here, it continues going upstream, so we kind of survey in that motion. And what it does is, it shows us bank to bank in a bird's eye view. So you've got a bit of bank, for example, just there, and the left, that's the right hand bank, and the left hand bank over here. And what you can see, you can start to see fish in there. Uh, the white targets indicate where the kind of sound waves hit them and the shadows on the bed that cast behind them. And what we've done is we've gone through, we've marked what we think are fish in red and that allows us to count the size of the adult shell. So you can see there's quite kind of dense areas, but they are quite spread out for this time of year. I think the added turbidity and the flow we had just after Christmas has helped spread them out a bit. But I'll give you some examples of some of the work we've done on the fen drains where they are really tightly shoulded up. But here we've gone through, we counted them, and we counted just under 2,300 fish. Um, I think that's quite a minimum estimate. You can see the side scan doesn't pick up areas and directly underneath the boat, and we often miss fish like that. So I think you could probably comfortably add on maybe a 1,000 fish to this shoal, uh, maybe a few more as well, and we'll go back in the future and, and have a look at this. So I, I think we're looking at over 2,500 fish, they will overwinter in the same place each year. So what's really good about this technique is now we can go back and we can survey the shoal and we know where they are. So it effectively saves a lot of time and resource in terms of finding fish. Just using the, those conditions where they shoal up, we can kind of take advantage of that and check on their, check on their numbers. So um, uh, now we've got a, a rough idea of the size of the adult shoal. What we'll do now is we'll go through and we'll, I'll show you the measurement technique we use to measure the fish and ID them to show you the bream. Okay, so now we've looked at the side scan data um, as we showed you in the survey. Once we've got that side scan data, then what we do is we go back through the shoal and we're able to quietly just drift through them and let them swim across the front of the multi beam. Now, this multi is the multi beam image again, it's a bird's eye view initially, and what it does if I press play it allows you to see the fish in really high detail. And in the software used to process it, we can measure them as well. So you can see the boom style shot start to come across the front of the camera, and you can see little little white lines appear uh, with little red measurements, and that's us measuring the fish, you know, fairly accurately, accurately enough for what we need to do. And we can go through and take a subsample of the size of the shoal. And once we've got that, we know how big they are. Um, what we tend to find is it's pretty much all the size of the fish in these winter shoals are the same size. So they are all adult fish and they all get together and there's very good reasons they do that. I'm going to explain a bit more later on. So you can see quite clearly the bream, you can see the shadows really well, the fin arrays and you can see how we measure them. So once we've got all this data we can put it in a length frequency graph and look at the size of the fish. Now this is in standard bird's eye view and what we do after this once we've got enough measurements we kind of roll the camera on its side, the sonar on its side and that gives us some 3D images of the fish that we're serving and that allows us to speciate them really well and um, we can identify small fish quite well as that we can do tench pike etc and i'll show you some footage for that in a second okay so this is that same multi-beam footage you just saw um, but what we've done now is we've now rolled the sonar on its side so we've changed our perception of the image to looking from above so now imagine being sat on the bed of the river looking directly across now press play 
you can, this is what we see. So you can quite clearly see the common broom, you can see the big shoulders, the fin array, the depth of the body. And what we do now is effectively go through the shoal. This is just a small snippet of the footage. And we just look out for the species in there. And what we tend to find is on the lower well end, pretty much that entire shoal we just saw is made of adult broom. We sometimes see a few carp in the fen drains, but it's just broom in the, um, uh, in the well end. Okay, this is the processed length frequency um, measurements from the broom shoal from the well end. So what you can see is, uh, you can see pretty much all the fish that we measured in that shoal are of adult size. So along the bottom you've got fish length in millimetres and then up the side you've got the number of fish in that size category. So the fish kind of start around 369 millimetres there which is basically 35 centimetres and they go up to almost 60 centimetres. Now that's an absolute classic size distribution for adult brim shoals in the fens. Um, we've seen that from all our fen drains, from the Neen, from the lakes and gravel pits we've looked at and they seem to fit in that size and that's because to be in that shoal there's certain rules to being in there so you've got to be a certain size uh, swim a certain speed find certain food and also and probably most important you've got to offer a similar target to a predator as a fish the same size as you so what happens in winter when the weed dies back habitat is slightly removed for bigger fish and um, they're still fairly and resistant to things like cormorants but what they will do they'll shoal up and they do that because shoaling it protects the, the many on the, at the expense of the few um, it's pretty much similar to every other fish species and a lot of animal species that do it as well classic thing shoal to avoid predation and we see this a lot in not just bream shoals but also roach as well and that's why you get this size um, you know starting about 35 centimeters up to about 60 centimeters so you, we don't we don't often see smaller fish in with a shoal at all now they will overwinter uh, with fish of a similar size they're much more likely to mix up in terms of species whereas we set, tend to get these big broom shoals that are purely made from broom occasionally tension carp um, if the location suits if especially marinas all fish live off channel marinas in winter time so they really mix in there but out in the open water like on the well end when it's barren where there's no no habitat or shelter you've got to be this kind of size to survive in the shoal now I've mentioned the word turbidity a few times in relation to fish behaviour and how they distribute themselves and this video is just a quick snapshot of how turbid the welling was um, when we surveyed it. So turbidity is pretty much how muddy the water is, how much suspended sediment there in there is in there and what how far fish can see and also how, how, how well predators can see fish. So the more muddier it is, the more bit more confidence they have to spread out and this is quite applicable for roach shoals as well. When you see roach crammed around small bits of habitat in the fens um, each winter if the turbidity rises they will spread out a little bit as well so this is just a good indication of, of how that turbidity has helped sh um, the broom shoal move around a bit and the next little video is a snippet of a broom shoal when it's not so turbid when it is cold and dry and quite clear and that indicates how tight they can pa be packed up Okay, so this is some side scan data from one of the fen drains in the Lincolnshire Northamptonshire patch. This is the Boston South 40 foot. Uh, it's just a good example of how tight the shoal the broom can be. Mm. So this is during winter time back in 2018. The water temperature is quite cold, but big difference this time is that the water had fined right down. It was quite dry at the time, very little colour, and just look how tightly that shoal's packed in. Um, you can see where we missed fish going over the top of it, and we marked them out there, and we actually went back again next year in exactly the same location but we've got a really good idea of the numbers in there and there's almost 2,000 bream in that shoal but you can just see how tightly they are packed in under the right conditions and again exactly the same location as the year before. Okay from looking at the results we've got there that's been quite a successful survey. Um, yeah so pretty much we found a good shoal of fish uh, we know where they have winter now we're going to go back in the future when we come back here and we'll get a bit more accurate number estimate on the size of the shoal. Uh, as I say, I think there's going to be a few more to add on there. Um, what it does do is demonstrate how each of the equipment is. So that survey probably took us the reason two and a half hours on the bank and probably took about two and a half hours to process the data. So within a day there, we managed to find out a great deal of information about the fish population that are welling, that are green, 
uh, well over winter and now when we do survey again we can look at where they spawn so pretty much we can get start to break down where they overwinter and where they spawn where they forage and that really helps with management of fish populations um, one of the key things about working in fisheries and doing the monitoring we do is, is catchment knowledge it's, it's second to none really in terms of in terms of knowing you know what's good for fish and, and how to manage them and how to keep them safe so yeah really really good bit of equipment um, it's done the job for us today um, all the data we collected what we do is brass sat to the angling clubs that fish in the lower well end and that's some uh, deep in St James Angling Club and people in district if you do fish here visit the websites um, yeah make sure you support your local clubs uh, they're run by hard working volunteers um, so yeah there's, there's good green fishing to be out here if you if you find them if you get on them um, there is good areas in the summertime where there's not much weed and they'll, they'll be in there so yeah there's, there's plenty of fish to be out here if you find some of the work we've done today interesting then please do visit the um, uh, Dangling Trust um, Forum website, Eastern Area Forum website, and a lot of our reports are published on there for the fen drains. And there's some good examples of bream shoals we've found in there the last couple of years. I think it's over 7,000 fish spread out between four or five drains. Lower Neen as well, over 4,000 bream in there, some barbel we found, and, and loads of roach and stuff like that. So um, uh, please do visit those. And some good examples are there the incident response work we do and how wildlife's money is spent to support fishers.